the feet of him. Let me tell you, whatever we do in the house of God, if you participate in it spiritually, you have spiritual access into the blessings of God. Don't ever think that when we come to church, we just we are here to just while away our time. No. Do you know who is in attendance? The Almighty God Himself is here. The spirit of just men made perfect. You can't see them, but they can see you. Some of them are cheering you up. You are facing through temptations, trial, but they are encouraging you, cheering you up because you are just about to, 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 to embrace, you know, the, the winning tape. Somebody shout amen. amen. That sister said she was in church, her legs swollen. But the instruction was, let everybody rise up. By complying, she picked her healing. That should teach us a lot of lesson. Praise God. It's another time tonight. I'm not going to take much of our time. The Lord has prepared his servant. He's going to minister with us, you know, to us. And after the ministration, we're going to come back to tidy up some areas via prayer. Praise God. Tell yourself, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. It has been concluded. Has been concluded. <laughs> Shout amen. You are not trying to win. You are already a winner. You are not struggling to win. Understand it. Yesterday we are telling you, we said, the beginning of defeat is in your mind and the beginning of victory is in your mind. And during the hour of prayer, hour of impact, our minister said something that triggers me thinking. And we picked that prayer for ourselves. May my mind not settle for the second. The blessing and the promise of God for Abraham was that I'm going to make you great. So it's in you, the families of the earth shall be blessed. He said, you have established my covenant with you. In chapter 15, God came to him and told him, see, I'm your reward, your exceeding great reward. I'm your shield and your exceeding great reward. But in chapter 16, mm, I pray for you. Your mind will not deceive you. Amen. Tell the Lord, Father, speak your word to me raw. And let that word mix with faith that I need to continue in this journey. I refuse to give up. I'm pressing hard by your spirit in the name of Jesus. My porch, my portion in life is victory. And I settle for this consciously. I'm winning. I'm not defeated. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Tonight we have one of our ministers. The Lord has prepared him, he's gonna come to share with us. And I want you to open your heart to receive the word of God. He is a man of God, husband of one wife, and a father of many children. Amen. One of the major criteria for you to be a servant of God in GKC is that your marriage must be clean. If there is any Yoruba call it color color around your marriage, even if fire is coming out of your mouth, we we'll thank God for your life. But you see, the altar of God in GKC is a blessed altar where Jesus Christ wants to confirm the word of his servants. Praise the Lord. He is our pastor at grace and glory amen he's a gentleman of god and he's a lover of his wife 
Put hands together, welcome Pastor James Kachui. Pastor James, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I thank God in my marriage, no kolo kolo. Praise be to the name of the Lord. I thank God that I'm winning in the area of my marriage. And you all shall win in your marriages. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for everyone in the house you are intending to get married, you are married. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. And in your marriages, no kolo kolo. In the mighty name of Jesus, no attack of the devil upon your marriages. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank God that uh, the right translation came out. So you understand what I'm saying. But receive that prayer in Jesus' name. And in the area of your marriage, you continue to win. When you get into your marriage, you continue to win. By the power of God in Jesus' mighty name. It's a privilege tonight for me to be standing before the people of God. I thank the man of God and our mommy in the house and all the ministers for the privilege to stand before the church to share with you the word of God. Nothing new I bring unto you, I just bring to you the word of God. Because Pastor Tabe was there on Monday, excellent. Daddy came yesterday, a different dimension. We are here tonight to receive from God. And God will speak to you, God will speak to me. And our lives will be a winning life throughout our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the Bible says in the book of Exodus, chapter number one. I want to start with this. If you want, you can take your seats. Just go ahead and take your seats, please. Hallelujah. Yes, somebody accused me yesterday that I will make everybody stand. The Bible says this in the book of Exodus, chapter one, verse number 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. In other words, the more they afflicted them, the more they continued to win, and the more they continued to grow. And the Egyptians were grieved because of the children of Israel. You are in this meeting tonight. Regardless of the pressure, regardless of the opposition around your life, you continue to win by the power of the spirit of the living God who is indwelling in your own life in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, we'll start from where Pastor Tabi started. The book of Jeremiah says this. That they will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. And that is a word for somebody tonight. That they will fight against you, but they are not overcoming you. To the contrary, you are going to overcome. You are already an overcomer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody declare, the more they afflict me, the more I continue to win. The more they oppose me, the more I prevail to the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to turn our Bibles to the word of God. I want us to turn to the book of the book of John chapter 3. Saiba, if you can help me, I'll be very grateful. I don't like opening my Bible. Praise the Lord. John chapter, chapter 3. My wife is in the house, in case the wife that I love, that is my wife down there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All protocols observed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. 
The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except that God be with him. How many of us have witnessed miracles in the church? Life and peace, milk and honey, arise and shine, power and dominion, wealth and riches, signs and wonders, all of our miracles. This tells us, except God be with the church, these miracles are not possible. Praise the Lord. And we see this young man, the, the Nicodemus, coming to Jesus saying, except God be with you, it is not possible for you to do these things. And I'm telling you tonight that God is in the house tonight. And God is in GKC. God is, is in maximum impact. He is the doer of all the miracles that we witness in this ministry. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the next verse, verse number three. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily. In other words, Jesus was winning. Praise the Lord. Wherever Jesus went, he performed miracles, signs, and wonders. Praise the Lord. He went to Ghana of Galilee, and there was crisis there. There was no wine. It got finished. And people were panicking. The owners of the ceremony were almost seeing shame. But in our house, we say no shame in Jesus' name. And the, the Bible declares in the, book, in the book of John chapter 2 that they came and they spoke to the mother of Jesus. And there are instructions that they were given. And the Bible says in that wedding in, of Ghana in Galilee that there Jesus performed the first miracle, turning water into wine. Praise the Lord tonight. Your crisis tonight are turning to a sweet wine in Jesus' name. If you have seen your name as Mara, your name tonight is turning to Naomi. In the mighty name of Jesus, if there is bitterness in your life, I declare upon your life from tonight, your name turns to be sweetness. In the mighty name of Jesus, wherever there is bitterness in your life, wherever there is frustration in your life, I pray for you tonight. Let this start in turning around for you. Let things turn around for your family. Let things turn around for your marriage. Let things turn around for your businesses. Let there be sweetness all around your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, Naomi was coming from a place of oppression. And she was returning and she came. They called her Naomi. And she replied, she said, do not call me Naomi. For I am, I am a woman who is afflicted and of deep sorrow. For I have suffered many things. In other words, she was saying, do not call me sweetness. Call me Mara. I am bitter of soul. You are in the house tonight. And that has been your experience. It's your, a new day is dawning for you tonight. From tonight, no bitterness. From tonight, no frustration. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody receive the word of the Lord in the house. Let that frustration be turned into joy. Let that mourning be turned into praises. In the mighty name of Jesus, ah, you have turned my mourning into dancing. Let your mourning turn into dancing from this meeting tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody say, I am turning my morning into dancing. Now the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Somebody say, today is my morning. And my morning is over. I continue to win. Now I want you to understand this, uh, that somebody who is mourning cannot dance. But somebody who is winning in life, they will be dancing all over the place. Uh, praise the Lord, somebody. And that man at the beautiful gate, uh, he was healed of that ailment. Uh, and he went running and skipping and leaping and praising the name of the Lord. Uh, the days before that, uh, he was not dancing, but he had won in life. His health was recovered. In other words, in his area of health, he won the battle. Somebody is winning in their health life. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And as that man who was sleeping, going to the temple, that, that, that God beautiful, you are returning with your own dancing. You are returning with your own praises. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, somebody. Now the Bible says, where we left, that, let's go to the book of John. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless a man be born again, he cannot win in life. Praise the Lord, somebody. Unless you are born again. This winning, I am born to win. Unless you be in Christ Jesus, you cannot win. The right way. In the book of Joshua, God was speaking to Joshua and he was saying so that you may have success and you may have good success. If you want to have good winning, you must be in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. You must be born again. Let's continue so that I can observe my time. Nicodemus said unto Jesus, how can a man be born when he is old? There was crisis in his mind. As a man thinketh in his mind, so is he. That is, we are praying, Lord, transform our minds. Lord, change my understanding. Open my understanding that I may understand your ways. In the name of Jesus, let me see possibilities among impossibilities. In the name of Jesus, let me see opportunities where nobody else can see opportunities. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be a change of mind from tonight. Let there be a mind transformation. Let, let our minds be transformed. But the transformation of mind can only come when we are in Christ Jesus. And Nicodemus was there, his mind was not transformed. And he was reasoning like a mere man, just like a common man. And he's asking, uh, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? This is a hard question that he was asking Jesus. How can it be that I have to be born again? I am already here. <laughs> this thing is not working. Somebody say, it's a new level. Somebody say, it's a new level. And this level is the level of faith. And the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. If you look at the scripture, the anchor scripture for us in this maximum impact, it says that everything that is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, praise the Lord. The world is before us. We are overcomers. But the victory that will overcome the world for us is our faith. Our faith in God. Our faith in completed work of the cross of Calvary. Jesus hanging on the cross, John 19, verse 30. He cried and he says, it is finished. The work is perfected. Go and enter into your own victory. Nevertheless, be of good cheer. Because in the world, even if it is finished, you shall have tribulations. Praise the Lord, somebody. So tonight, we are entering the new level of faith. Let's continue to, to, number, to chapter 3, verse 6, I guess. Five. And Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Except I be born of the spirit, I cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Hallelujah. You have heard many times the pastors, daddy saying here that the spirit, the spiritual controls the physical. And that is just the law that dominates. By which mandate are the pastors praying and say, go and come with a testimony. And you return back with a testimony. Did they do juju? 
No. They are using something that is inside of them. And that's something that's called faith in the word of God. Praise the Lord. And they are calling those things that are not existing as though they are. And they say, go, you are returning with your testimony. They did not keep Job anywhere. But by the reason of faith that overcomes the world, because they are born of God, the spirit of God in them, they can be able to command and testimony results. Praise the Lord. In other words, God is telling us, if you want to live a winning life all the time, you have to live your life in the spirit. Praise the Lord, somebody. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Now the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 that in, uh, carnality is enmity to God. But spirit-minded life is peace and life. Praise the Lord. But to be carnal-minded is death, but to be spiritually-minded is life and it is peace. That is where we are entering. A life of peace. Praise the Lord. A life where there is no crisis. A life where like Jesus was in the boat and the disciples are waking him. Master, master, don't you care that we perish? Praise the Lord. The law of the spirit of life was in Jesus. And Jesus woke up and he said, peace, be still. And there was calmness in the sea. Let there be calmness in every area of your life. Hallelujah, somebody. But I have good news for you that the same power that was in Jesus Christ when he commanded the sea, the storm, and the wind to be still is at work in your own life. And you are going to command those crises. You are, com you are going to command the storm in your life. And you are saying, peace, be still in the name of Jesus. Is that financial crisis? Peace be still in the name of Jesus. Is it marital crisis? Peace be still in the name of Jesus. The greater one is inside of me. And I take authority that he has given unto me. And I command peace in Jesus' name. I command peace in Jesus' name. That is how you're supposed to live your life. Is there a crisis? So stand on your feet. Stand on the authority that God has given unto to you and command change and change will come. The Bible says, behold Luke, Luke chapter 10 verse 19, behold I give unto you power uh, to trap over serpents and over scorpions and over every work of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That dream in the night will not hurt you. Praise the Lord, somebody. That swelling in your leg will not hurt you. But arise to the authority given unto you and command healing. Command change to the glory of God. Hallelujah, somebody. All these things will take place for the person who is living and who is born of the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Let's stop playing games in the church. Not all who say, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God. No, 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 no. Those who are born of the spirit of God, they are the overcomers. They are the winners in this life. They are the winners in life to come. Bible says we shall reign here and we also reign in heaven with Christ Jesus. It's our time to reign. It's your time to live victorious life. Here on earth. And as you tr be translated, you live victorious life. Verse number seven. Hallelujah. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Do not be shocked. Even I'm saying you the same thing Jesus said, you must be born again. That your father is a, is a pastor does not qualify you to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That your mother was a general overseer, it does not qualify you. You must have a personal relationship. You must be, have revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. You must be born of the Spirit. Praise the Lord, somebody. You must be born of the Spirit. How many of us here are born again? Huh. Yeah, this is where crisis starts. Praise the Lord. 
There'll be no crisis in your life in Jesus' name. Because some of us, I have been serving in the choir ever since I was two years. I have been in the choir. And they don't know the meaning. We had a, I don't want to call it crisis. We had a, 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 a situation in our Grace and Glory Center. And this, this person is fervent and he's everywhere. He's serving God. He's everywhere. But one day, one thing or another, ministering, ministering, said, young man, are you born again? No, I am not born again. But I have grown in the church. My pastor knows me very well. He brought me up. And I am even talking to him now. I said, sir, it's okay. Are you born again? To the end. Take him, I, we took him through scriptures. We ministered to him. At this age, this year, he gave his life to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. So I'm here tonight to say, all of you are not, not all of you are born again. You need a change. You need to live a winning life, victorious life. You need to be born again. Praise the Lord. Now being born again is a spiritual transaction. Praise the Lord. Is a what? Is a spiritual transaction. You came wearing a black suit like mine. If I get born again now, the, the suit will not all of a sudden turn white because I'm born again. No, 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 no. <laughs> That one remains. Is a what? Is a spiritual transaction. It's a faith thing. And you get transformed from inside out. Now, let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. Because I want to, all things being equal. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5. We want to look at verse 16, 17. Let's go straight to 17. 17. Go to 17, please. Thank you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is on the winning side. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things have become what? All things have become new. Go to verse number 21 because of our time. For, Jesus, for God has made Jesus. I'm, putting, I'm changing it for us. For God has made Jesus to be seen for us. Who knew no sin? Jesus did not know any sin. But why did God make Jesus to be sin? Understand this, church. Jesus was not made to carry the sin of the world. Hello? What did I say? Jesus was not made to carry the sins of the world. No. Jesus was made the very sin. He became sin. That is what the Bible says. For he made him to be seen. He became seen on our behalf. For he and he did not know sin. He became sin. Sin itself. But something happened. There was a spiritual transaction that took place there. As Jesus was becoming sin. Something spiritual. Something glorious was also taking place. And for you and I who are in Christ Jesus, for you and I who are born again, he made us the very righteousness of God in Jesus. Praise the Lord, somebody. What did he do? He made you and I the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I asked this question in a German church. I said, how many of us are righteous? And they had a fight. How many of, of you are righteous? Pastor, how can we be righteous? How can it be? Are we God? No. How can it happen? But I'm telling you tonight that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
You have already been transformed. You are not that old sinner because you are in Christ Jesus. You are a new creation and you have been made the righteousness of God. It doesn't matter what you, where you have been. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. What matters is that I have been transformed and I have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And Jesus was made sin. So I don't have to carry any sin any longer. Because I am the righteousness of God. Jesus became sin and I became his righteousness. That was a divine exchange there. He became sin, I became the righteousness of God. Nothing is changing that. But there has to be a change of our mind. There has to be a change of our understanding. You don't have to, 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 to live all your life under condemnation. Praise the Lord somebody. You don't have to live a life of condemnation. Oh, I abused her. I cannot pray in the morning. Oh, I slapped him. We don't slap here. Hallelujah. But you cannot be able to face God in prayer. Who said? Understand this. You have been made the righteousness of God. What is the righteousness of God? The ability to stand before God without any feeling of guilt or condemnation. And you can face God with boldness. And that is how the servants of God can be able to stand in his righteousness and command change in situations and it will take place. Because they have discovered it's not by their power, but they have been transformed. They have become the righteousness of God. Now that man who is living with this understanding that they are the righteousness of God, they are winners throughout their lives. Praise the Lord, somebody. Understand that you are the righteousness of God. If I don't say anything else tonight, understand that you don't have to carry guilt. Understand that you don't have to carry condemnation. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse number, number 1 and 2, for there is now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You remember where we started? Whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. But for those who are living their life in the spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and of death. Arise and walk. Live a life of no condemnation anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you can only understand that you are the righteousness of God, child of God, you will not be forced by condemnation not to pray. You will not be kept by condemnation from going to church. You will not be kept by condemnation in years of agony and frustration because there has to be a change of mind and understanding. Understand that this transaction is completed in God. That is number one. When you understand that you are the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God, that means we have been brought at the level of God. Hello? We have been brought where? At the level of God. That's why Jesus came and he declared in John 10, 34 and 35, he came and declared, he told them, Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. What did they say? Ye are gods. He was talking to me, a man like you and I, and he was saying, is it not written that ye are God? Number 35. If he called them gods, and to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Praise the Lord. So if I tell you you are the righteousness of God, therefore you are born of God, you are like God. Is there any problem with that? Can God fail? Is God a winner? Why are you not a winner? Somebody declare I am a winner. I am born of God. 
I am born of God. And therefore I overcome the world. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says also the same scripture is quoted in the book of Psalms 82 verse 6. The same. Have I not said that ye are gods? All of you are children of the most high God. The book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11 says, chapter 11, For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified. Who is sanctifying? God is the one who is sanctifying. And who is that who is being sanctified? It is me and you. Are all of one. For which cause Jesus is not ashamed to call them brethren. Uh -uh. What about that? Jesus appearing here, he'll tell mommy, brethren. Hmm? Quietness in the house. Yeah, I didn't write the Bible. There. He's not ashamed to call them brethren. Same power. Same authority. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing the sick, and delivering them that were oppressed of the devil. That tells me that you and I, the same life of God, the same life of Jesus, the same life of power is the life that you are entering to. And it's a life of winning throughout and throughout to the glory of God. How God anointed him. And Jesus returned in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. And he said that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because God has anointed me. No man anointed you. No man anointed me. But the spirit of the Lord God is upon you because the Lord has anointed you to preach gospel to the poor. He has sent you to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the, to the, bl to, to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. The spirit giveth life. The spirit of life. So understand this. You have to live your life in the spirit. Understand that you are born again. You need to be born again. Understand, number three, that you are the righteousness of God. You are playing at the same level with God. Jesus is not ashamed to call me my brother. Praise the Lord. And how many of us have brothers and sisters here? The same way you relate with them is how God expects us in the spirit to relate with him. Praise the Lord. That is why he is not ashamed to call us his brothers, his sisters. Because he took our place in the redeeming sacrifice. He brought us back. And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. That as we were taken by him. He has sealed you and I. As long as you are born again. There is a seal. Yesterday night we were here. And daddy said there are marks. Some people are having marks upon themselves. And I, I understand there are some demonic marks. That woman said she was sleeping. And a sharp, sharp object entered her body. And when she woke up there was incision on her hand. But understand that inside of you there is a seal. Praise the Lord somebody. And nobody can remove that seal. You have been bought at a price. You are a winner in Christ Jesus and not a winner today and a loser tomorrow. You are winning forever and never in the name of Jesus. It says there, in whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth. This is the word of truth you are listening to tonight. Ah, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after ye believed, after ye believed, you were sealed with that seal of the Holy Spirit of promise. Somebody say, I have a seal. Somebody say, I have a seal of God in me. Ah, if God be in me, who can be against me? 
I carry the seal of God inside of me. Nobody can move me. Nobody can scare me. I am the righteousness of God. I carry the seal of God to the glory of God. And therefore from tonight, with this understanding, I continue to win. With this understanding, I continue to take territories. In the name of Jesus, the more they afflict me, the more I win. The more they receive me the more I prevail in the name of Jesus somebody declare no shame, no shame. somebody declare in my life no shame no declare in your marriage no shame hallelujah I told them they are watchmen that are put all around the world and they are very scary sometimes and it is well we must respect them praise the Lord you can see them praise God Hallelujah. In our lives, no shame. In the name of Jesus. So understand. The laws of God are not burdensome. They are not burdensome. They are easy. If only we can live a life of faith. The just shall live by faith. Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 38, 39. Let's go there in closing. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in them. It's in the word. Go to verse 38 again. Let the people see it very well. Now the just shall live by faith. Which is the victory that overcomes the world church? Our faith. First John 5, 4. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now the just shall live by faith. Go to the same scripture, chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Please take me back there quickly. But if any man is not living by faith, if any man draws back, the soul of God has no pleasure in that man. You will not draw back in Jesus' name. But we are of them that who draw, we are not of them, thank you, sir, who draw, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, like Judas but of them that walk in faith. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise the name of the Lord. A man of faith is a man of action. A man of faith is a man of winning. Praise the Lord, somebody. Elijah went and he declared, the Bible says he was a righteous man. Ah, the, the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, much. And the man of God, Elijah, prayed. That tells me that he was a righteous man. And he prayed that there would be no rain for a span of three and a half years. And it did not rain. That means he applied faith and he commanded, let the heavens be shut. And the heaven was shut. And he came again, he prayed. He said, let the heavens be open. And the heavens were open. In your own life, we declare an open heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. But understand as a man of faith, you are a winning person. You are a winning child of God. Because the just shall live by faith. You shall not draw back because of situations and circumstances. You continue to live and to walk by faith in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord, somebody. Elijah, the Bible says he prayed again and rain came. And, and the Bible says that that fervent prayer, it says that Elijah was a man of like passions. He was a man like you and I. He was not prophet Elijah. It says Elijah was a man of like passions. He was feeling the same way you feel. You wake up in the morning, it's like there is war all around you. But he lived a life of faith in his God. And therefore he stood and he declared the word of the Lord, which we are going to declare tonight. And so shall it be as we declare. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Understand this. Last thing I want to tell you. That a man who is born of God, who is the righteousness of God, who lives by faith and who does not walk by sight, is a talking man. Praise the Lord. And a talking man is a winning man. Praise the Lord. A talking man is a winning man. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. You will open your mouth tonight and you are going to speak to every situation around your life. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Romans 4, 16, 17 that God in whom image we are made, we are told we are the image of God. We are the righteousness of God. This same God, he calls those things that are not existing as though they are existing and therefore you are rising on your feet tonight and you are declaring that I am a winner in the name of Jesus all of you rise up on your feet and open your mouth a talking soul is a winning soul you are declaring that you are a winner in every aspect of your life in every department of your life in your health in your spiritual life in your marriage, in your business, you are a winner by the power of God. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to lose battles. I refuse to draw back. I refuse to look backwards. In the name of Jesus, but I continue to win. In the name of Jesus, I am a winner. In the name of Jesus, I am a winner by the power of God. I am the right righteousness of God. Declare it tonight. Declare it tonight. Declare it tonight. I am the righteousness of God. Jesus is my brother. In the name of Jesus. Oh, give you, give God the praise. We are winners. We will not lose battles. We are not to be pitied. In the name of Jesus, we continue to win by the power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus, mighty name, we are prayed. Oh, please, Cyber, give me, as daddy prepares to come, give me Isaiah, 40, Isaiah 54, verse, verse 14. Isaiah 54, verse, verse 14. It says this, and understand. In righteousness shall thou be established. In righteousness shall thou be settled. Divine settlement. In righteousness shall thou be settled. And if you are settled in righteousness, thou shalt be far from oppression. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Why? You are already established in righteousness. When the devil comes to attack you, you declare, get away, devil. I am the righteousness of God. I've been washed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. For thou shalt not fear. Somebody say, no fear in my life. The Bible says, fear has torment. You refuse to be tormented of the devil. You be far from terror, for it shall not come near you. Somebody say, no fear in my life. Somebody declare, no terror in my life. In the name of Jesus. Somebody declare, I am winning. In my life. In the name of Jesus. Declare, I am establishing righteousness. I am established in righteousness. No oppression in my life. No fear in my life. No terror in my life. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, no torment of the devil. Over my family. Over my children. No torment of the devil. Fear has torment. We refuse every form of torment. In the name of Jesus, we reject the torment of the devil. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus, my name, we are prayed. Verse number 17, we know this verse very well. Verse 17. And because you are settled in righteousness, you can say no weapon formed against me. 
that shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment I shall condemn why is this so this is my heritage as a servant of the Lord and my righteousness is of the Lord my righteousness is of the Lord therefore no weapon Formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are settled in the righteousness of God. Somebody convince yourself I'm the righteousness of God. Somebody convince yourself I'm an overcomer. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Put your hands together. Lisa, a word of prayer to him. Tell the Lord, Father, strengthen your servant. May he be a partaker of that which he has ministered to us tonight. May he partake of the same blessing. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, while we're still standing, uh, there is a need for us to be able to touch some areas. Please let nobody deceive you. If you are not born of the Spirit of God, you are not bound to succeed in life. Success to God is not success to the people of the world. Joseph was a slave boy, yet the Bible says he was a prosperous young man. So the way God looks at things is not the same way, you know, the people of the world. If you are not driving around in a big car, you have a big mansion, the world, you are not successful. But that is not how God sees you. Although it is not without it, do you understand? But the first thing must come first. The life in Christ is a winning life. The life outside of Christ is a losing life. The person with, in fact, the person is a mega loser, actually. But you are in Christ. Continue to push on. God is in love with you. His name is over your life. He knows you. He calls you by name. It's just that, uh, you know, most times we are overwhelmed by the things around us. And at times, those things drives you into tears. And a man that is uh, full of tears, you can't see the future that God has for you. Praise the Lord. So please, the first thing is, you must have the revelation of Jesus Christ for yourself. We are not just saying it. It is real. It's not because you are a member of a church. I'm so surprised that testimony. So, uh, in fact, there's a need for us now to begin to review our workforce in the church. Because some people have this erroneous thought that because I'm very active in the church, I think I'm born again. So when the pastor says, how many people are born again? He said, no, I'm in a particular department. I I'm serving. I think I'm born again. No. It is a relationship with God. You must know you have that relationship. A man and a woman knows that he's a wife, the husband. There is a relationship between them. So if you are not born again, you don't have a relationship with God. So for some time now, maybe for a while, let's just leave the word born again, born again. But because almost everybody is born again now. Even if their life, their character, the life they live negate it they are born again they are member of gkc my center is life i'm a member of life and peace i have peace and i have life <laughs> if you don't have relationship with jesus the son of god you are not born again and that relationship your pastor cannot convince you 
that you have it. It is individualistic. Personal. It is so important. So this mindset that people, you know, that uh, my father is a bishop. And we grew up in a Christian home. In fact, my name is Gabriel. All my other siblings, one of them is Abraham. Another one is James. Our last two, uh, 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 the last two girls in our family, one is Deborah, the other one is, the other one is who? Mary. <laughs> so I, we are born, in fact, my father's name is Zachariah. <laughs> If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are not born again. You are not on your way to win in life. And after being born again, you must obey him. So the acronyms our children came, me, I was thinking that, you know, beautiful, born again should be first there. Be born again. Number two, obedience. Praise the Lord. Because that is the foundation. You are not born again. You cannot win in life. If you like, take the old pound sterling in heaven. You will not have way there. Your living, your existence in this life is, you know, is just for a short time. You are just passing through. You are just passing by. So how many, how many people in this minute tonight, you know in your, in your heart that you have a relationship with Jesus, the Son of God? You know that. Because I can tell you my own testimony. If I call you out now and say, please come and share your own testimony with us, will you be able to share the testimony? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You have a testimony? Yes. Oh, that testimony shall be permanent in Jesus' name. Yes. Now, you are born again, blessed be the name of the Lord, and you continue in Christ. Listen to this, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, he being born again, not by corruptible seed. Do you understand? In other words, there is a seed in you. It can never be destroyed. It is a seed of God. So every child of God, you have that seed in you. That seed is untiled the word. Praise the Lord. Now, after being born again, please be seated for a few minutes. I want you to sing this. We are going to pray now. You are born again, right? You have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Okay. After that, settle for him alone. All this chocho, 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 you go there sometimes, you go to another place, and you say you are born again, you are in church on Sunday morning. But you know all the places you go to. No, you cannot win like that. You can't. Listen, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. Exodus 25 verse 5. God is a jealous God. If you say oh, you are born again. And thank God, the pastors in GKC, we, don't, uh, that we, we are not uh, your police. We don't send anybody to monitor anybody. We, the best we can do for you in the church, we pray for you, we teach you the word of God, and we now commend you to your own conscience before God. Now, after you are born again, please, say to with God alone, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't create for yourself any other God. Don't let anybody deceive you and say, please, uh, uh, come, come, come to this place. You have been praying for, a long, uh, uh, for, for some time now. Uh, this place is going to answer you very, very uh, sharply. Settle for who? For him alone. Exodus 20 verse 5. And Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven image. Some of you, when you were coming from Africa, they gave you certain things. It cannot work. It won't work with Christ. You can't win with that. Well, I, I, I was sharing with you how that the Lord, some people, we are in church, we are praying. We are so passionate about our brothers and our sisters. 
And we are praying for them, Father, surprise his brother, surprise his sister. But we don't know what he has doubled into. We don't know the things he has put his hands. And we are saying we are all winners. No, we, can't be, we cannot be all winners. We can't all be winners. The foundation of God stands sure. It has a seal. God Almighty knows those who are his. So if you belong to God, stay with him alone. Don't deceive yourself. You can't deceive God. In fact, you can even deceive Pastor Labode. You are just everywhere. Uh, and Pastor Fala is nodding and saying, I think that lady is a spiritual lady. She's spiritual. The way she dresses, I'm convinced she be. Or that brother. God knows, God knows every one of you, one by one. You are seated. It's not written on your forehead. The way God knows you is the way the devil knows you. He knows you more than you know yourself. If you like, be everywhere in the church. They are carrying this, you are carrying it for them. You know, there are some people like that. That is how they... So, pastor, pastor so what next now? Like matter. They are kumba with so many things. Yet no relationship with Jesus, the Son of God. Listen to me. That you are a member of a church will not take you to heaven. Yes, Pastor Labode is telling you now. That you are a covenant partner. It will not take you to heaven. Thank God Calvary Tower has come now. That you are a Calvary Tower partner. It will not take you to heaven. Your relationship with God is number one. And you must not allow anything to come in between you and your God. That which comes between God and man usually is, it comes in form of temptation. And that becomes their idol. Praise the Lord. I'm saying it. I'm free of man's blood. You can't serve God in hypocrisy. Thank God you come to church, but what, do you, what are you doing out there? Oh, maximum impact, I will not miss it. You are here, thank God for your life. But after maximum impact, what are you doing? Some of you, as you're looking at me, you have alcohol in your fridge. And you say, it's, you convince yourself it's not a sin. You, con you just convince yourself like that. Okay, it's, I, know, I agree, it's not a sin. Can you drive in this country drinking alcohol and you have accident? What would they do to you? You are not married, but you have a man every month. He services you. But you come to church. And when you come to church, you just like. <laughs> you, you're, you're laughing, right? Look at that person beside you. You say, Pastor is talking to you. Thank God, you are in the department in the church. And nobody knows what you are doing at home. You, you can't win, no. Mary Gorandi like this. Because that is the assignment sin has given to everybody. The person is going round, 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 round. With all energy, he can't break through. Because sin is a reproach. It comes with reproach. But it is only righteousness that exalts you. You reign, you win by righteousness. You can't be a member of the choir. Nobody knows what you are doing. Or you are in the ocean department. What you are doing is you are just eyeing everybody that comes to join. Say that lady. Because of her, you stylishly, you move to the front a little bit. You look at her very well. I'm talking to you. Now, you are not in any department now. You just come to church. All you do is just to observe ladies. You are not in any department. You don't want to be committed, but you are in church. Time you come to church, you just look around. 
Is there any lady available in this church? And ladies that are not wise, they fall victim. You continue like that, you can't win. No matter how much motivation we give to you, if you like, let the pastor be shouting and jumping, you will win. I, I promise you, you will win. It's a lie, you will not win. No matter how many times Pastor Labo did slap your head, you can't win. Because the foundation of God stands sure it has a seal. God knows those who are his. The children came with the player card, R. They said it's righteousness. And it's part of what will make you to win. So if the R letter R is missing, pronounce it. <laughs> that is the meaning of bonguru guru. <laughs> Because R is not there. Is somebody listening to me? Because the house of God is the ground and the pillar of truth. So if we don't tell you the balanced gospel, we are just giving you, uh, you know, we are making your life, you see, so many people, this is how they walk on the street, half truth. This is how they walk on the street. They are not balanced Christian. They believe in grace, 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 grace. This is how they walk in life. But if you take the portion of righteousness, you can't do without it. Because the God you are serving is a holy God. And the Bible says, so let every man, this, let them run away from any, all appearances of evil. Thank God for our choir. Wonderful. I don't know what you, you people do in your closet. Choir. God justly dressed. Thank God for your life. I'm just using it as a case study. No one knows what you do in your closet. Uh, you can't win. No. Let nobody deceive you. I'm just talking of the ushers. I'm talking of, you know, these are the departments very, very conspicuous in the church. But what of those people who are not even serving in any department? But you are a green snake under green grass. You move like this. If you're in this church, you are not ready for marriage, and you go to a lady, and you are talking to that lady, you are not ready for marriage. You yourself, you know you are not going anywhere concerning marriage now, and you are going to her, all because you want to sleep with her, you cannot win. You will not win. You know the word of my man is decree. Do you agree with me? Are you sure? Yes, Say very powerful amen. amen. It is not my word. It's the word of God. As some people say, I can't miss liquid fire service. Liquid fire. Let the liquid fire of God touch my eye. I will win. It's a lie. Let us put you inside drum of oil. That oil will only boil you. You must belong to God, spirit, soul, and body. It is key. That is what distinguishes us and separates us from the world. So all this that we are, yeah, we thank God, it's the word of God, but there's a need for us to understand the truth of God. One prayer we're going to pray before we take the offering, and that is First John chapter 2, and we're reading Verses 15, 16, and 17. Love not the word, neither the things that are in the word. If any man love the word, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the word, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These three things will never align a man to win. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. They are not of the Father, but they are of the world. And the world passeth away, and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Father abideth forever. They are the winners. They are the real winners. 
Not those who are living a double standard life, hypocritical life. That guy stays in Abu Dhabi, but he comes every month to come and meet you in Dubai. Nobody said about this to me. I'm just telling you that is your life. Every two, two weeks, is either you go to Abu Dhabi or he comes to Dubai. You are not married. I am talking to you now, you know. Or the other guy lives in Fujairah. GKC, GKC. Science and wonder versus... <laughs> if you like, yeah, let's laugh. But it, some people are doing like that. They're doing that. Oh, grace and glory versus life and peace. So they are not going to that center because Pastor Lava, Pastor Fola is there to preach or Pastor James. They are going there for the appointment. May God have mercy upon you. We are not condemning anybody, but we just want you to know how this works out. The Bible says the eyes of God is too holy. He can't behold iniquity. Thank God, Pastor James says, yeah, we become the righteousness of God. But for how long do we continue in sin? And ask God's grace to continue. No. What it will lead to is disgrace. And the disgrace, the devil has been serving some people. Uh, lately. I mean, he has been serving them. Don't do it. Don't do it. Pastor Labor Day is hard. Okay, go and do it. Before you know what is happening. My country, they call it Dongbo. You will not be disgraced in Jesus' name. Amen. Help me tap somebody beside you. Tell him or ah, be, be born again. After being born again. Amen. Stay with God alone. Amen. Don't play games. Aha. Uh -huh. We'll tell you the truth in GKC. If you like, come. If you like, don't come. You are not playing games. You are born again. The next thing is begin to live a life of peace. He says, be still and know that I am God. You are passing through challenges. Bring it to God in prayer. But make sure that you live a life of peace. Don't discuss your problem with everybody. Br brother, do you know what I'm passing through? You go to another sister. Sister, do you know what I'm passing through? Don't discuss with anybody. Discuss with your God in heaven. Your God who sees you in secret will deliver you. His hands will come true for you. Somebody say amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tri-stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. You are praying concerning a uh, job, concerning marriage, don't be in a haste. Don't rush at it. Whoever wants to get married, let them get married. They won't be the first or the last. Or the, no, let, they, they, let them go and marry. Let them give back to all the children. Your own is inside of you. When the right man comes, your own will come. But in the meantime, stay with God. Am I speaking to you? Okay. So be still. And know that now in in Ezekiel, I mean, sorry, Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. That was the same thing God said to Moses. Be still. So you see this Egyptian you see today, you will not see them again. And the word of God came to came to pass. Praise the Lord. Now, the number four is for you to live a life of praise. It is a winning weapon. Be thankful to God all the time. You need this. You hold these things. It will help you. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving to his court with praise. Bless the Lord at all times. Brethren, it is real. Now in the book of Psalm 22 and verse 3, say, but thou art holy. O thou that inhabited the praise of Israel. So if you know that God inhabits the praise of his people, you must give him praise at all times. Not grumbling, not murmuring. When you do that, there is no how you will not win in life. 
Is somebody with me? Praise the Lord. Now, Pastor James mentioned this. Be persistent and be consistent. Don't be like this. When the country where somebody is telling you something, you say, be straightforward, isn't it? Sida, Sida. Sida, all the time, Sida. If you don't know any language in, Arab, in Arabic, Sida is straight. Live a life that is straight before God and before man. Don't be crooked. Live a straight life. Be consistent in righteousness. Be consistent in your service to God. Be consistent in worship. Be consistent in all that you do to God or for God. Joshua and Caleb, they were consistent. From Numbers chapter 13 and 14, by the time you go to Joshua, I mean, Joshua chapter uh, 13 and 14, they took hold of the promises of God. You must be consistent. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 1, that guy also, uh, what was his name now? Uh, sorry, 2 Kings chapter 2. Elijah was to go to heaven. You remember I told you about the difference between Elijah and Elisha. You, who is Elijah? Which one is Elisha? Okay. So, <laughs> Elisha served Elijah before Elijah, Jah. <laughs> he followed closely. He was following. All the other sons of prophets that were coming, do you know that God was going to take your master today? He said, yes, I know. Hold your peace. So, as he, those are distractors. They are in church, but I hope you are not one of them. They distract people from en engaging God, encountering God. They will tell you your own is too much in the church. Uh -uh. Are you the only person? You say, oh, choir, 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 choir. Uh -uh. Are you the only person? You just put everything on your head. Uh, small, small now. They are the sons of the prophet. They will tell you, uh, why do you go to church every day? Are you the one who killed Jesus? They discourage people from serving God. You have, if anybody backslid, you have a query before God. So you must do what you must be. You must be consistent. Be persistent. Hallelujah. Amen. And lastly, Pastor James also said it, you engage faith at all times. You engage faith, use faith all the time, not some time, all the time because that is your winning weapon. Outside of faith, you are a mega loser. But in faith, you continue to win. And lastly, always speak what God has said. I'm a winner. I'm winning a life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I have something very, very powerful I want to do before we round up. It's a specific instruction. It will uh, strengthen your faith at the same time. Now, I have this thing here. You watch what is going to happen. I have this here. Thank God. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, anyway, let's just, let's just engage this alone. Now, this... I want to put this in the hands of everyone in GKC, everyone in Maximum Impact tonight. I've always been giving it to you, but this one is different. And you all will see what is going to happen. I'm asking my father to make this what you can see and you are holding to convince you that you are a winner. This thank God. The name there is God's kingdom citizens worldwide. It is like Jesus' complimentary card. If the president of a nation gives you a card, you will never misplace it. Or a CEO of a company, you cherish it, you keep it. Now, I want to put this in your hand on behalf of my father. Your victory in life is guaranteed. Amen. Now, what you're going to do is this. Father, thank you. 
because you will confirm your word in the life of your people. I'm going to put this in your hands. No matter the numbers that you have, keep one jealously. One or two, keep it jealously. I'm bringing this out by instruction. And let it be with you. Please, pastors at center level, this next Friday or Sunday, do the same thing at your center. Call the people of God and put it in their hands specifically and tell them, one of such, let it be with them. It will become a mantle in your hand. It will become a major point of contact for the supernatural in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Now, if there is anything in any man tonight, as I drop this in your life, that thing will, it will flee by the power of God. You are here at the maximum impact, so what we are doing here is not just a tradition. Now, by you taking this, number one, you are a servant of God. And it says in that Isaiah, no weapon, form, or fashion against you that will prosper. You believe what I'm telling you? You will encounter it in the name of Jesus. Free to God. You came to church tonight with your covenant commitment. Please kindly run to the front. We are behind time tonight.